right guys welcome to my brewing part of this channel um, it's really designed for beginners newbies because I'm I've been brewing a couple of years so I'm not not much more than that myself you know advanced brewers probably don't need any advice they've got it all covered but for people thinking of getting into brewing or have just started brewing you know hopefully this will be of some help to you um, so there's four stages of learning that's three okay so there's four stages of learning the first is unconscious incompetence and that's when you don't know about something and you know nothing about it chances are you're at the second stage of learning which is conscious incompetence so you've found out about home brewing you've started looking into it and you've realized just how much you don't know and uh, that's when it can be quite overwhelming you know you're looking into home brewing and you're seeing things like brewing the bag three vessel like systems extraction vorlaf lauter mashing you know it's a whole lot of stuff to take in a lot of terminology and uh yeah your head gets pickled and you might not even go any further because that's that's just put you off um so my aim is to lessen that overload and get you brewing um and the next stage of learning is conscious competence where you're aware of what you're doing you've got an understanding with it and you're working away at it and then finally there's uh, unconscious competence where you can just do it in your sleep basically master it so i'm probably somewhere between conscious incompetence and conscious competence to be honest i didn't do much brewing last year so i've had to have a good refresher this year but having done quite a few brews you know it's all come back to me so um, you know should you start off with extracts brewing the bags maybe a, a mash louter turn or a you know multiple vessel system well there's something to be said for each you know there really is extracts it's a much cheaper setup you only need a few few things like a fermenter and some bottles or a keg um, but the quality isn't as good as if you did brewing the bag, which requires, you know, a bit more equipment, a big kettle, uh, obviously the bag, and then you've got the mash louter ton, which is a bit more expensive again. Again, the quality goes up, and then you've got the individual like vessels, you know, hot liquor tanks, kettles, mash ton, louter ton, you name it. So um, I'm just going to break down. The difference between them because I've done extracts I've done brewing the bag and now I'm using a mash louter ton so I've got a good experience for a beginner and hopefully I can uh, tell it to you in a way that relates so I mean extracts they're kind of the pot noodle of the brewing world um, brewing the bag more of a home-cooked meal and uh, using a mash louter ton that's more like going out to a michelin starred chef who's on the top of his game okay so extracts pot noodle don't know about you but i like them you know they're good they're nice enough to drink the extract beers they're cheap you know all you got to do is add water you know what's not to love it's it's a good way to get into the hobby uh, get some experience and most people will recommend you start there personally as a fancy myself as a bit of a gordon ramsay in the kitchen I wanted to do something a bit more complex and start with all grain straight away. So I went with brewing a bag. Got myself a peco, which is just a big five gallon kettle basically, and um, started doing that. And the very first beer I made, you know, what, where do you make, what do you make? Where there was all these recipes, you know, IPAs are predominant at the moment, they're very on trend. And I, I looked at them and, it, you know, they're very strong in hops and, you know, I didn't think it would really be my cup of tea. So I was looking around and there's the APA, the American Pale Ale, which a light ale like the IPAs, but not as hoppy. So I thought I'd try that. And uh, first beer I made, it was the best beer I've ever had in my life. Hand on heart. You know, the recipe that I got from uh, one of the homebrew web websites deserves the credit but it was unbelievable. And that was it, I was an instant convert. You know, it, it really was just mind-blowingly good. 
Um, I then had the good fortune to meet a Scottish guy who was um, providing me with some of his old equipment and he gave me a beer and I was again blown away. I'd never had anything like it. And he said it was a 60 shilling um, Scottish ale. If you've never had Scottish ale, it's basically, instead of hoppy, it's very malty. And that's traditionally because Scotland can't grow hops up here. So they were few and far between. So they'd use things like heather and they'd concentrate on the malt flavor. And uh, as someone with a bit of a sweet tooth, it's oh, just right up my street. So I then started making the 60 shilling, which is a light Scottish ale. I made the wee heavy, which is like a 10% equivalent of like an imperial stout for the Scottish ale world. I then made a Guinness clone, an imperial stout. I made a lawnmower beer with some leftover uh, grains and hops. And I can honestly say that all of my beers have been unbelievable. My mate then passed away and I inherited some of his kit and uh, I got one extract kit from him and I made that. And you know, it, it was nice, but honestly, the difference in quality between brew and bag and extract for the uh, additional outlay I would suggest just going with brew and bag. Now I've done six or so brews with my brew in the bag and it started to get holes so I was faced with a conundrum. Do I get another brew in the bag system or a new bag rather or do I look at doing an MLT and I, Trust me, I have no clue about plumbing, like nothing. My missus has got a better idea of plumbing. Um, and I watched a few videos and in all honesty, I, I couldn't get my head around it. You know, I watched them for a couple of weeks. I was just like, you know, this is a bit too much, all this like 15 millimeter ball heads, like tank connectors, I, oh, I just can't be bothered with it. But I let it sit for a while and then I looked at another video and I was like, actually, I think I've got, a, got an idea here. So um, I, I basically went to B&Q, had a list of components and then just put them into each other and uh, see if they fit. And some of them didn't, some of them did. And, you know, I got it right in the end. And then I made my MLT. And the difference between the MLT and the um, brewing the bag system, it, it, it's like the jump from brewing the bag from extract, you know, the improvement is pretty damn amazing. Um, now, if you've got a recipe, you know, it's, uh, it's basically done on like the judging criteria. So different malts, different grains, they all have a different effect in terms of like sweetness, the color of the beer. And then when you add the hops and how much you add the hops, it affects the bittering and the aroma and the flavor. So you get a recipe and you haven't quite got what you need or you've got to get a substitute, do not worry about it. This isn't for judging, this is just for your personal consumption. And trust me, if a beer is darker than it should be or lighter than it should be, you ain't going to notice the difference. I mean, I certainly didn't. Um, if, if you're brewing beers for judges, then you know, it's a different story, but don't get too hung up on stuff, you know? Just experiment. That's the joy of brewing, that's the joy of cooking. You know, experiment your ass off and you will find something that blows your mind. Like I made my APA a couple of times. I tried it with different substitute hops, but I always went back to the first version. I've tried adding mango to it and it was incredible. Um, you know, it's, it really is a case of just suck it and see, you know. It's um, always good to start off with a proven recipe, but you know, once you've done that, you know, you, you'll start to get an idea for things. And, um, you know, it, it, this hobby is just amazing. It really is. It gives you the, uh, the freedom to be creative and get an incredible product at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, I'll take you through now how I made my mash louter ton and, um, I'll do subsequent videos on the, the beers that I make and you know, it'll give you a starting point for what to do and what not to do. All right, let's go inside. So, 25 litre fermenting bucket with lid.
a tank connector for 15 millimeter pipe, a ball valve for 15 millimeter pipe, red handle for hot liquids, some 15 millimeter copper pipe, five T's and six elbows. So I've also got this for the Vorlaf. I can just run my mash out straight into a kettle. So this is for filtering the grains during the lautering Vorlaf process. And it's really simple. I basically got my tape. Took a reading at the bottom, like so. And then I thought I'd make this a little bit smaller just to make sure it fits. So I started with putting the pipe inside the connectors to see how much I would lose. So I ended up working out how much pipe to cut for each length. Now, I cut everything to length, put it all together and made sure it fitted. And then I came to make the grooves. And I started with a hacksaw. But the problem is, if you've already cut these pieces short, putting it in a vise at like this little end, it just gets crushed. I'm sure you could put it in half and then cut that bit and then move it and cut that bit. It was all very fiddly. So I ended up getting my Dremel using the angle grinder attachment and just cutting them. So if you're gonna do a um, hacksaw job, just be wary, it's, it's a bit of faff. You need to drill a hole for the tank adapter. So this has a nut here that screws onto that. And this obviously requires a hole. Take a measurement of that. Job done. This fits in, tightens up. You then put a piece of pipe, goes through the adapter, and then your ball valve screws onto the end of it. So I've got my pipe in here. I've got this here. This just slides under. And then fiddles on like that and obviously takes a little tinkering with getting the pipe just the right length but got it sorted so when you mash say your target is 66 degrees you only really want to lose a degree or so over the hour mash because this isn't insulated like a wine cooler I decided I build an insulating uh, chamber for it now this is just made out of pallets and a bit of scrap um, OSB that I had. So the lid comes off. I've got a packet of boiler insulating bags here. And I'll show you how this setup works. And there you go. First brew I made, I lost a degree over an hour. Absolutely perfect. 
once the mash is done I'll take the front off open the tap out it comes job is a good one trust me if I can make this anyone can real easy make the best beer you've ever had cheers